Greetings, I'm Rob Chapman. I'm the captain. Welcome back, as often we've said. Yes. So, in today's special episode on Anderson's TV, Rob and I shall be comparing two of ours. <laughs> well, maybe. Uh, we shall be comparing the two cheapest Epiphone guitars in the store with the two cheapest Squire guitars Some in the Some would store, call that Clash of the Shitans. <laughs> Um, of course, we don't mean that they're shite. It's just an I, entertaining title. It is an entertaining title. Uh, I, we, we coined the phrase shaffordable uh, a few years ago, which we don't use enough. Um, and uh, I like the clash of the shitans. Uh, right, this first guitar, we thought we'd do unboxing for you as well, because I guess the internet likes unboxing videos. This is a Squire Bullet Strat with a hard tail that in the United clash. Kingdom... Oh, can be yours Clash. for the princely sum of £109, making it the cheapest Clash. Squire guitar in the range. Dolls the range. Nicely packaged, I should say. Comes Sturdy with a plastic cardboard bag. cardboard box, yes, in its own special white condom. Oh, no. <laughs> Pull my end off, Lee. Ooh. Ooh. It's got a, it's got a, it's got the I'm most just... ineffective, um, uh, what do you call those things? Knuckle, Knuckle duster. dusters in the world. <laughs> no, look at that, rubbish. Um, so all of my natural reflexes to avoid re reacting to that strike. So that's Deadly how they look, was. straight out the box. Wow. Massively in tune. Why do I have a feeling this will be really good? Because it probably will be. The second one. It Hang does look like it's been made from an affordable timber. Well, it's, it is affordable. Affordably, but it's got an interesting, resonant, joyous tone. Feel. Right. The second Squire Wait, just... is another Squire bullet, but this time it is a Mustang. Oh, it's like Christmas a in mighty, the Anderson's household. The Mighty Horse. Uh, same box, same basic packing material, um, same factory as far as I'm aware. Ooh, look. That one had come out Ooh. of its condom. <laughs> that's a bad thing. Pregnant cardboard boxes. Um, so that's the Mustang. Uh, then the first Squire. That's also £109, by the way. Then we're over to Epiphone. Good fretch off. Yeah, we'll talk about the spec and everything. Uh, oh, this is one of my faves. Oh, this yeah. is the Epiphone SL. This is actually the cheapest guitar of the four. So how much is this? 89 what? of your great British pounds. Uh, and then finally, oof, because only really because this what, Epiphone... It's a Chinese bolt-on dream, isn't it? Yeah, only because this Epiphone sort of isn't quite as Les Pauly as perhaps you uh, guitar aficionados out there might want. I've also got this Epiphone Les Paul Special VE. Is it called a Les Paul Special VE? Les Paul. And this is 109. So same, same price as the two Squires. Right. And it does have humbuckers. So, now they're all, all these guitars are available in different colors. Um, and hopefully our man Rory that will cool. do something across the screen of what they're all available in. So we'll just have a little bit of a tune up. Okay. And then we'll come back for our demo. Awesome. Tune in. <laughs> Inspired, Mr. C. Inspired, but my fingers feel like they've been 
put into a tramp <laughs> and then taken out of a tramp. <laughs> um, right, well, anyway, that little impromptu jam there was, was purely and simply because we started noodling and that's what happens. Uh, but I guess we should start really by, uh, there you go, F first impressions well, then, Rob, of these four guitars. I have become friends with this guitar immediately. I yeah. like the sound of the pickups, despite the fact that they're backwards. Yeah. So this switch, that is neck and then that is yeah no bridge and then neck but you, you, you intuitively all you need to do is undo the nut just and twist it into twist the right it. position yeah yes. that i've seen on on various affordable guitars is just where literally the switch either hasn't has just been tightened up in slightly the wrong here's a funny way. thing that you wouldn't yeah. expect What's that? it's so clash of the shines that even the film covering the pit guard is just a little bit cheaper. It's a bit cheap, yeah. <laughs> um, well, look, so the good news is uh, they've all come out of their box. They all work. None of them are damaged. Um, yes. And the setups on all of them are okay. They are okay. Um, obviously, none of them were in tune, but you wouldn't expect that. But we've tuned them up. I guess the first thing negative that Rob and I have, and, and I think it's all four of them are going to get the same accusation, the strings are rank. Oh, they're really bad. They are rank. I don't understand why guitar manufacturers, and I, I guess I include myself here, uh, ourselves, don't use coated strings in the factory because invariably with the transportation, the warehousing, the distribution, they sit for months before they end up with a, with a user, retailer, customer, friend. Yeah. So... I mean, I know why they don't, in the sense that you, if you take a guitar that's retailing at £100 in the UK, 20% of that is VAT, a chunk of it will be the retailer's margin. A chunk of it will be the distributor's and the manufacturer's margin. Da, 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 da. So you end up then with a cost price to actually make the guitar, which is obviously su substantially less than the retail price. Well, a hundred pound guitar uh, would be what? 28 pound? Who, I think it's going to vary from one brand to the next, but let, let's go with the principle. So if you then said, if a manufacturer said, do you want to use this set of strings that's one pound fifty dearer than this set of strings. Yeah. The guy's going to go. What you mean? Actually, increase the cost of the guitar by five or ten percent. Yeah, well, not ten percent, but you you get the the general uh, gist of what I'm saying. Yeah. Every, every component on this guitar, from from the the, the timber. Um, I know. Again, when I've been looking at other affordable guitars, uh, the the price difference between going through pieces of wood that are clearly four or five pieces of wood glued together yeah, as yeah, opposed yeah. to say a two piece is enormous yeah. relatively speaking so they'll, they'll be looking you know every 10 to 50 cents saving on a guitar like this will add percentage uh percentage profit margin yeah. back on for the manufacturer so i i think i get that at this price point it's like um yes everything's going to be you know, if there's, you know, it's not going to have lovely strings. No. Well, I think was my really long-winded way of getting there. Shall I start with this then? So it's the Mustang. Yes. It's from Squire. It's made in Indonesia. It's got a beautiful maple neck. It has um, a wooden body of some origin. I'm not sure what they are on that. It'll, I, I think they're <clears throat> slightly ambiguous on the website to allow them it'll to be, change it. Yeah. Pop, poplar, probably. It'll probably either be poplar or, or a kind mm. of mahogany, of which there are many different kinds. One tone, mm. one volume a three-way switch, slightly marred by this sticker from Fender. Uh, a couple of humbuckers that you, you can't split down, yeah. nice hardtail. And um, fret job is really good, which I was quite pleasantly surprised about, especially at retailing the whopping amount of mm. what? 109. 109. You could fall out of bed and go up for a beer with your mates and buy a kebab for all of them for less, probably, <laughs> uh, or more. <laughs> Just. We're using we're using affordable amplifiers, by the way. Rob's got a mustache. Uh, sorry, Rob's got a Katana 50. I've got a Fender Champion 50 XL, both of which are under <clears throat> 200 pounds. Katana 50, amp for the people. <laughs> good way of testing the setup on a guitar that's, that's kind of affordable is uh, firstly to press down the last fret, press down the first fret on the same string, and then have a little dab over the 12th fret, and there should be uh, yeah. what the northerners call a gnat's chuff. <laughs> um, but there should be about a mil under there. And then if you play a nice bend, it should allow you to do that bend. And that's why I always do that bend. 
that mm. is a really well set up guitar. And if it's if that gap is more than a millimeter, it means there's too much bow. Too in much one, four bow. Uh, and it'll be uncomfortable to play. And if there's yeah. not any, if there's not enough gap there, that'll give you all your fret buzz, and it means that your neck is concave. It's gonna uh, turn off the concave delay. Concave or convex, basically that way rather than that way. Concave would be like that. So con concave, sorry, concave, yes. So concave, concave is, is like a dab. Too, too, action too high, convex, convex action too back low. Bow, yeah. Yes. It's a good guitar. Sounds fine to me. Um, Even up here. Okay. It's smooth, like a baby's bum. Yep. So my Epiphone uh, Les Paul Special VE is made in China. It's a slab body, by meaning that there's, uh, there's no carved, arched sort of top on the top of it. It's just a slab body. It is a bolt-on neck, so it's um, kind of stealing an idea from Fender uh, and putting it on a guitar design you wouldn't normally associate with a uh, bolt-on neck, but it's fine. It doesn't you know doesn't make it um a problem uh really affordable tuners probably about the most affordable tuners that you normally see on a guitar can i see those ones yeah i would say more affordable than what's on the the squire bridge and tailpiece uh same kind of idea as rob's really two humbuckers no push pull i like that you can just see some of the open pore grain yes. through the finish i'm glad you you mentioned that rob this is a <clears throat> It's interesting, this one, the normal way of finishing a guitar, because all wood will naturally have grain and, you know, uh, indentations in it, if you like. So a lot of manufacturers will use a filler, a grain filler, before they then coat the guitar and finish it yes. to give a, a, a sort of a perfectly smooth finish. Um, this doesn't have the grain filler on it, uh, which gives it a sort of um, like a, a raw look, doesn't it? Which, yeah. which I actually like, I think it's kind of, it gives an authenticity to the fact that it's real wood and not, you know, some sort of plastic or whatever. But anyway, so here are some clean tones. They're honky, quite loud yeah. pickups in these. So for my rhythm section at the beginning, I was just turning things down a bit. So a little bit less volume and a little bit less treble. But... It sounded to me like when you moved that neck, it did a lot of bend. Was, was that accurate? Oh. Yeah, it's a bendy neck. I mean, I wonder how bendy a, my neck that's is. That's not. You can do that to any guitar, to be fair. That's not really fair to, to you know, say this is in, it's something to do with its cheapness. Both pickups together. And the bridge one. The tone control gives you that much jazzier. You know, it, the intonation's good. You know, um, so all the chords are sounding in tune. Um, What's the fretwork like at the top of the neck? I think the fretwork's good. The the the, the fretwork. Um, the only thing again, it's got that feeling where the strings aren't <coughs> fresh, and therefore the frets feel. Can you can you hear that sort of? You can't really hear it. No, that I can hear it from scratchy. Here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now that to me just again is like um, that. This just needs a new set of good strings. They probably all do, in fairness, and just some playing for a bit, just to sort of get that. Yeah. What is that sort of? It's almost like a. It's almost it like a, a coating polish. that just needs to be worn off, doesn't it? On the on the fret. The thing is, you know, a five dollar piece of equipment from Stu Mac would sort that out. If I put some gain on. Um, Yeah. 
think it's all right. Again, this was um, this. There was loads of different colours in this model. I think the, the the black, particularly the satin finish, you know, it has a tendency to show up uh, all the fingerprints, maybe in not necessarily the nicest possible way. But I, do you know what? One hundred and nine pounds, man. What do you? <laughs> What do you what expect? Are, what are you realistically looking to criticise on a guitar like this? Can I um, see the uh, the fretboard? Of course, yeah. I'm just interested to see something that I've been learning about. Is it slightly bound on the on the edges to sort of so you can't see the fret ends? No. So, but I've learned something cool that I'm going to share with you. <clears throat> when companies buy frets, mm. they either buy them. Do you know what a tang is? Yes, I do. <laughs> Not that kind of tang. So the tang is either all the way to the end of the fret. Which yeah. is the normal everyday fret. Yeah, this, you're or, the tang is, is the the, the, the bit that goes, bit that goes, into, goes the into the wood. Yeah, yes. yeah. or on slightly more high end guitars, they you can buy cut tang so that it's tang in the middle, maybe <laughs> up to, <laughs> but then, but then the end uh, half a centimeter to the fretboard, there's no tang. No tang. So it's been cut, cut tang, which means that when you then seat the fret into the board. <laughs> I'm sorry, it is just the way it is. When you sit the fret into the board, you don't have that bit of tang coming down here mm. that, that you feel when you get a little bit of fret yeah. sprout. Yeah. That looks like it's cut tang. These all have full tang. Is it poon, poon tang? It's yeah. not poon tang. Honestly, <laughs> it, was, it was there, it was waiting for it. You knew it was coming everyone, didn't you? Um, so okay. that, that's, it's good, that's a good thing. Um, well done. So let's jump over now okay. uh, to, I'll go Squire and you go uh, oh, thanks. Epiphone. Whose phone is binging away here? My phone, it's on, I didn't also set it to... Uh... Now, <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna throw this out there, Rob. That's the best looking one. You think the it's the best looking one? It's the coolest looking I one. I think four. that's the coolest looking one. Okay. But then I'm a humbucker, kind of slightly offset, yeah. Mustangy kind of dude. Uh, I lo I know, I've seen this in all the other colours. I mean, hopefully Rory's been able to put them up on screen at some point in this video. But that what does that pit guard look like, Lee? A dog. It looks like a horse. It does look like a horse, Woo! doesn't it? <laughs> He's awesome. It's that is totally horse. awesome. Those okay, is can I, I just uh, feed his, the pony? Yeah, feed the pony. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really hungry. <laughs> I think that's the coolest guitar that there is out of the four. Well, I mean, it, it's the cheapest one, so I'm not holding out too much hope for it to be the best guitar out of the four, but I think it's the coolest one. Well, you know what? What? I mean, who knows? Where's it made? 2018 uh, Performance China. China. But that's fine. China makes some, gr China makes some very high-end guitars. They do. Not this one. They do. <laughs> If I roll off the tone, it's the same thing but dark. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go clean and see what happens if you. Uh. So we should just say so. This is um, the tailpiece on this is kind of like a very original style of tailpiece for Gibson. Uh, in the sort of mid to late fifties, they moved over to this two-piece style tailpiece. But the the early ones were what was called a wraparound tailpiece. So you just have a single stop bar, strings would wrap around it. Um, this is what we call an intonated tailpiece. So it has little raised bits of it to help with the guitar's intonation. They've guessed what kind of string you'll use. Uh, well, and then all you can do is using these grub screws here is you can push either end slightly further away to, to again. So the intonation should be okay on this guitar, but it'll never be quite as perfect I mean, as if you can only, adjust each <coughs> set. Separately. It'll only be out if you're playing like from here up and not a lot of people buying this kind of a guitar would would dwell yeah. up the dusty end <clears throat> quite that much or at most, you know. uh, what have we got same yeah same tuners that are on this one single coil pickups obviously rather than humbuckers it's probably going to sound um it's going to sound brighter and clearer and quieter like a thinner, dreamy thinner creamy dream day a creamy dream day like you you know sunshine and ice park. cream with Start with the uh, the honky bridge Is neckety neck. Mm -hmm. 
Nice. And in the middle. That's good. Bolt on again. Yeah. Oh, you betcha. Sure. So I don't think, I think that the next one in the range of the Epiphone range, so when, when you get to that sort of 150 to 200 pound mark, you'll begin to see the, the neck go to a set neck, a glued in neck joint rather than a bolt on. Yeah, and I'm, um, I'm guessing, well, we have no idea what the woods are, let's be honest. Cardboard? Probably. <laughs> probably not cardboard. Probably oh, yeah, yeah. maple and uh, wood. Definitely would, yeah. No, yes. they are wood. Again, uh, the, the specification will be on our website, I'm sure. Yes. Um, anyway, so you've finished demonstrating that one? I'll I think so. I mean, we'll it's have a little very, bit of a very simplistic. We'll have um, a jam, yeah. What were the chords you were playing earlier? Uh, G. Yeah. E minor. Yeah. Uh, and I was just going back, and then there was a C, A minor. Okay. <laughs> and then back to the G. Why don't I play that for you? Uh, well, let me just tell people about this before we... So this is, uh, I guess... Um, is it the most iconic guitar design of all time ever? I mean, it kind of has to be, doesn't Probably it? Probably is, isn't it? So this is obviously the, the, the Stratocaster that came out in 1954. It was Leo's kind of second um, attempt at a, at, a, at a sort of mass-produced guitar. Telecaster was the first one. Um, and this is, the, this is called the Hardtails. It's Squire Bullet. So again, it's Indonesia, same factory as the Mustang. Um, very similar feeling guitar. It's really just the body shape and the pickups that are different to the Mustang. Actually, that's not true. Is the Mustang a shorter scale? He says. Same kind of neck profile, but I believe the Mustang is a shorter yes, scale. Yes, this is the 24 three quarter. Uh, yeah, and um, so the strings on the Strat will just feel like there's a little bit more tension, a little bit more effort having to be put in to bend the strings. Um, Hardtail, so no tremolo system on this. Um, Three single coil pickups, so with a five-way selector, so all the sort of strat tones you'd hope to hear. Affordable tuners. It's got the same tuners that the Epiphones have got. So actually the Mustang is winning on as far as tuners go. Yes. Um, let's hear some tones. Let's hear some tones. Uh, starting with the neck pickup. <laughs> These two together. It'll pick up. These two together here. And then finally bridge. Super bright, this wow, guitar. Bright. The volume and two tone controls. So volume works regardless of what <laughs> setting you are. And for some, why well not for some strange reason, but the, the original Fender design was the tone control. This tone would work for this pickup. This tone would work for this pickup. And then this pickup would have no tone control. So it was always your go-to like, oh, I'd do a little bit of a lead solo without worrying that the sound was going to be too dark. <laughs> So you've got a variety of tones on here from a distortion point of view. That's it's, got a, it's got a kind of a thing, hasn't what's, it? What's the amp? Fender Champion 50 XL, which is basically the Boss Katana 50 is pretty much the one that all the review sites and certainly our internal sales would suggest is the king of the hill as far as um, affordable amps to buy. Uh, but the Fender Champion 50 XL gives it a good run for its money, does a few things that uh, we prefer. And if you're interested in the two, there's a great video on our channel by Pete and Rabir where they shoot the two out. But Anyway, that's what it is. So let's have a little, uh, go on, you play those chords and I'll jam over the top.
That sounds great. Especially through that amplifier. It wants to feed back like crazy. It does want I to mean, feed back. I can... <sighs> How much of you wants to take that guitar, buy it, do some special like switchcraft wiring, polish the frets, put in a set of uh, bare knuckle single cores and then love uh, it forever? None of me. <laughs> no, no I, I, and I, the only reason I say that is I just... <laughs> Rob and I completely sort of disagree on... Not disagree, but have a different... Um, I... My personal thing is... I like to buy a guitar yeah. uh, because I like to pick it up and go, oh yeah, I like that. So I don't pick one up and go, oh, I quite like that. And if I just spent like another hundred pounds on it or something like that, I might get something I'd like more. You would just buy the I, more I would thing. just literally go, okay, well, what if I just had more money then to spend on the guitar? So that's, I've always been like that. So I'm probably not a great advert for aftermarket like parts and stuff. Right. So although, all I want to do to this is restring it. So I want to restring it and oil the fretboard and just generally set it up more nicely. The Strat that you owned, that you did a lot of your life playing on, you, you put stuff in, you put pickups in. No, you're in completely and... right. I mean, that, that was a, I, I do totally agree. So that my, the Strat that I got when I was, I don't know, my late teens, I bought as a neck and a body with nothing on it. And so I did all that journey. But then I suppose... I was just, it was a, that was a, a journey of discovery. And I was right. lucky in that one, I suppose, that I ended up with a guitar that I liked. Although it was, a, it was absolutely at a time in my life where I didn't know much about any other guitars. So when right. I say I liked it, it was, I did like it, but it's not like I'd tried 500 other guitars and could go, oh yeah, it's the best one. Yeah. But you're, you, you're so tell us what, so you, you, your point of view and opinion is probably more popular well, than mine but actually, what would you, you do? can probably tell me if i bought that guitar mm. and i put a set of bare knuckles in it mm -hmm. and then i do some basic fret polishing mm -hmm. and oil it and then maybe put a switchcraft switch in there and look at the wiring and everything mm -hmm. and maybe that would set me back i don't know 150 200 pounds minimum 200 and that's assuming you do all the work yourself oh i would do the work myself yeah i would look on the, the internet yeah learn it and do yeah. the work myself so but for 300 pounds could i buy a guitar like that but with bare knuckles and switchcraft no definitely not that, no. that's kind but of my what, point what i'm saying is that so what you'd end up with with a guitar with bare knuckle pickups in here is you, you would end up with a guitar that feels like a 100 pound guitar to play yeah but sounds like maybe an 800 pound guitar because that's the kind of but what I mean get. is, once I've done a fret polish and I've restrung it and set it up and I've played mm. it in and it's oiled by my hand, it's not going to feel like a hundred pound guitar. Anymore. No, but it's still, you know, it's still going to have a really cheap piece of timber for the body and a really cheap bridge. And I, I, I've just come up with an idea for a video. Go on then. I think we should. <laughs> you want to do this mod challenge? I think don't we you? should take two guitars. Yeah, yeah. And I think we should wrap the head... Basically, I should get one affordable yeah. and one fairly like medium price, like £500. Yeah. Pounds, and I should do some mods to the affordable one and then present them to you with no, the I headstock agree. wrapped. Or, or I'll be blindfolded, I don't know. Well, I, I think wrap the headstock so that you yeah, don't yeah, have yeah, to be blindfolded shout. and you can look at them. Yeah. And then you, you play them both and then you see if you can tell which is which. Or which is just, or just which is my favourite still. Yeah. Because I do, I, I do... Anyway, look... So, do we pick a winner? I mean, well, is but, there I, mean, a... I haven't played that one or that one. You want to do a quick... I'll have a quick... Come on then, a quick noodly new. I got tethered by my... <coughs> <laughs> it's light, this, isn't it? It's, yeah. it's, it's clearly, a real, you know, like a light, a light wood. A light wood. And of course, one of the things on this is the back of the neck is lacquered. So it has a very different feel to the, the two squires. And even this Epiphone, which is a sort of satin finish here, it's it's... It's definitely like, the gloopiest feeling one. I to prefer play. to feel the wood. It's poplar. What? This is poplar. The body is How poplar. poplar? Really poplar, or just fairly poplar? Yeah, it's just regular poplar. <laughs>
I mean, you can play anything on it. There's absolutely nothing. <laughs> It's kind of fine. Yeah, I. You know what? I'm just gonna have a little. I. You know, I played. I played that Mustang play before. One? No, but I want to play it. It's um, really nice. I prefer if, this to the Mustang. Though. If are you getting towards the point? I mean, obviously, Clash of the Shitans could be a huge Hollywood blockbuster. And if you had to pick a Shitan to get up on top of Mount Olympus and battle it out with some old Greek gods, which one of the four would be your Titan? This one. It would And in fact, I had an experience recently. I'm recording, I'm in the middle of recording an album. It's an instrumental, ambient, landscape album. And to the studio, I took three guitars. I took a really expensive PRS wood library that I bought my son. I bought a quite expensive Chapman. And I bought the cheapest Chapman that I make as a backup. And then I recorded the entire album on that really, really affordable Chapman. And it rekindled my love of the affordable guitar. It made me realise that the law of diminishing returns is such a real thing. Mm. And sometimes it's more about what feels right to you and not, not, and not the other thing. What do you think of that? I think this one's my favourite. Right. Okay. As in, I know it was the one I've not played the most, but I, I like it. it. It would be one of these two. It would be one of these two that would be my favourite. That's my uh, least favourite because it's let there's not any wood to touch apart from the yeah. fretboard and to be it's fair the, it's a weird one isn't it I know it's only a £20 difference between, so these three are the same price they're all 109 and then that's £89 so you have to remember that in, in percentage terms that's oh, yeah. 20% less money than these and so, it feels about 20% yeah so it's, it's my favourite looking one it's absolutely one that I might buy for fun right um but you're totally right if i was learning to play the guitar yeah the extra 20 pounds is absolutely worth spending and i, I would want one of these two i don't dislike the the strat um it, it's i don't know it, i don't really know what it was about it it didn't well you got some really feel expensive as strats nice. already haven't you yeah it didn't feel as nice to play as these two but that mustang hey. is great it, it is pretty much king of well, the push but I, like the the way this I, sounds. I, I might just <clears throat> literally just go if this switch had been, I mean, I'm being really picky now because it's going to take me like three seconds to loosen this, turn the switch into the right way around and then tighten the, switch, the thing back up. <laughs> Anyone could do that. Uh, Crank it then. Have a But play. if this had been perfect, this, this would have been my uh, heads up, hands down. It makes me smile. You know why it makes me smile? Because it makes me realise that all the kids who want to learn to play guitar in 2019 can choose almost, I mean, literally any one of these four and yeah. have a great shout at getting into this. And, and learning if you do buy one of these four and you do do a cool mod, could you let us know in the comments section below what you've done? Because I'll be interested to find out. Yeah, and I, I commit to now, even though these are always complicated videos to do, but I commit to that challenge of we'll, we'll agree a budget and you can get a really affordable guitar, yeah. spend two or three hundred pounds on it, it'd be easy to do that. Yeah, yeah. And then I'll, we'll just go, right, well, what was the total cost of that guitar? Yeah. And then I'll go, shopping, go shopping to shopping find for... the best guitar that I can find for that money. Without and seeing the one we've modded. Yes, you just give me a price, that's yeah. all it is. Although you'd have to give me. I'd have to know I'll what just style of price guitar it was. You, yeah, well, I'd have to know if it was a Strat or a Tele. Okay. Or, yeah. An S-Type or a T-Type. Yeah. Uh, and that's what we'll do. But there cool. you go. So, what do you think? I think this is a great... I don't, I don't know if we can do polls, can we, on YouTube? But if we could. Uh, but in the comments section below, which was your Titan and which was your Shiten? Shiten. <laughs> anyway, I've been the captain. I've been Chappers. See you later. Cheers. <laughs>